How's it going everybody, it's Razine here for Astro Photography and in today's video it's the Night Sky of January, another set of Night Sky videos. I've all got them planned out, there should be 12 this month, if there isn't, come yell at me, okay? That is your permission to keep me accountable. Right, so if you're new here, the Night Sky is a curated list of deep sky objects, planets, meteor showers, that kind of thing, which I think might be interesting to you for imaging over the month of January. Now I split this out through focal lengths based on the full frame imaging format, it's like a full frame camera, like a Canon 5D, but equivalents will be on the left hand side here. So no matter what imaging system you use, you should be able to find something to image. We're gonna start off with deep sky objects and beginning at two to 300 millimeters of focal length. And initially I'm gonna send you straight over to the constellation of Auriga. Now in Auriga is one of my personal favorites, which is IC405, the flaming star nebula. However, at two to 300 millimeters of focal length, you should be able to get a lot more in, such as the spider nebula and possibly also the fly nebula as well. So that's many big nebulous targets in one go. Nebula targets as well, so you can use narrowband filters on these, such as your hydrogen alpha filters or your dual narrowband filters if you so inclined. So that's 200 to 300 millimeters. At 400 millimeters, there's really only one I'm gonna suggest at this time of the year, and that is the galaxy m31 the andromeda galaxy funnily enough in the constellation of andromeda now you might have already been imaging andromeda for a lot but let's face it it's a fantastic target it's very interesting and there's never not enough time you can sink into it so at 400 millimeters i would be recommending or suggesting you to image andromeda at five to 600 millimeters of focal length point over to taurus and we're looking at m45 here the reflection nebula the very famous one the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, Subaru, whatever you want to call it. So the Pleiades, broadband target, reflection nebula, very iconic, lots of blue dust around it. And actually, if you've got dark enough sky, there's so much surrounding dust in this area of sky, you can actually target it with wider focal lengths as well, but you do need those dark skies. It being a broadband target, such as reflection nebula, light pollution filters, or no filters at all would be your best bet. Don't worry about using narrowband on this. You just won't really see much benefit from it. So four to 500 millimeters, please. At seven to 800 millimeters, I'm gonna point you over to one of my other all-time favorite targets in the night sky in the Northern Hemisphere. And that is in the constellation of Perseus. And that is NGC 1499, the California Nebula. This thing is massive. But at these smaller focal lengths, like seven to 800 millimeters, you're really focusing on a smaller area but if you do tackle it with larger focal lengths as well, you can get a lot of the overall shape of it. So I love this target. Again, it's an emission nebula, so you could start doing things like HRO, narrowband or RGB, you know, make an HARGB image, which is one of the first HARGB images I ever shot. So seven to 800 millimeters, California nebula. At 1000 millimeters, we're gonna be going over to the constellation of Orion. It's begin the fleet at this time of the year as you know it's begin to set and it's about now when I can start imaging it from my garden for about 40 minutes. So in the constellation of Orion, I'm going to point you to the belt and this is going to be IC434 as well as NGC2024, the horse head nebula and the flame nebula as well. So a lot of the times targets in Orion get overshadowed by M42, the great Orion nebula, but the horse head nebula is a very close second of popularity. So if you haven't got much data yet, you begin to run out of time. Now these are the last few chances you've got to image in Orion. So take them if you want to. 1,500 millimeters. Now we're getting into those longer focal length instruments here. It's another galaxy near the Andromeda galaxy, but it's actually in the constellation of Triangulum, M33, the Triangulum galaxy. So this is a very large kind of face on galaxy. Very pretty to look at. One of my favorite galaxies out there. And funny enough about this one, very similar to Orion, because it's large and face on, it will actually benefit from a little bit of HA data thrown in there. So you can see those nebulous regions in other galaxies. How mind blowing is that? You can take a photo of a beautiful galaxy and see the nebula in there as well. So if you make a HA RGB image of triangle and galaxy, wow, beautiful. So that is my suggestion for one and a half thousand millimeters. And at 2000 millimeters, this target often is shot with its companion, but doesn't really get much love on its own. So if you've got a very long 2000 millimeter instrument, go over to Ursa Major and look at M81, 
Bode Galaxy. Like I said, you normally see this imaged with the Cigar Galaxy next to it, but Bode's itself is a very pretty galaxy, and at this long focal length, and those wide apertures associated with these kind of telescopes, you can get a lot of detail out of this galaxy. So that would be my suggestion for 2000 millimeters. So onto planets for you planet hunters out there. Bit of housekeeping here. These are all based off of my latitude in the United Kingdom, around the Midlands area. And I've only counted them if they reach above 20 degrees altitude at some point during the month, all right? Because otherwise you're shooting through too much fog and haze. You're, you're a planetary imager, you know what you want to do. So there's three of the twos from this month. Mars, there's Mars out in the sky. Really nice planet, obviously, as we know. Uranus. So Uranus, you're going to probably need darker skies because as we all know, it's really far away and it's really quite dim. And Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is really only available throughout the first half of the month. Again, depending on your latitude, this might change. But for me in the United Kingdom, Jupiter was really only first half of the month. So those are the three plans you've got to choose from throughout January. So now it's time to talk about the lunar phases for January. In case you want to know when to break out the hydrogen alpha filter, when to get an early night, or if you like taking those really high detailed images of the moon, this bit's for you. So the full moon coming from last year, the full moon falls on the 6th of January, and that is the wolf moon. The last quarter is the 15th of January. New moon is the 21st of January. And the first quarter is the 28th of January. Native American tribes, as well as Europeans in the medieval times, supposedly called January's full moon the wolf moon after how wolves would howl painfully throughout the month of January, supposedly due to the lack of food from December. Other names for this moon also include the ice moon, possibly due to because of how cold January can be, as well as the old moon, in this case, maybe because it's come over from the year before. However, the University College of London's Almanac rather lazily calls January's moon the moon after Yule. Very imaginative there. UCL, very imaginative. And that's where January's moon gets its name from. On to any noteworthy events throughout January. So on the 3rd of January, we have the Pleiades, which is quite close to the moon, and you could shoot this with a 300 millimeter lens, again, on those full frame bodies, a 300 millimeter lens, if you are so inclined. The 23rd of January has Saturn and Venus quite close to the new moon in the skies. Being the new moon, it's gonna be quite early evenings time when you have to get any chance of shooting it. You might not be able to see it. The 26th of January has the moon and Jupiter quite close to each other as well. Around a 100-200 millimeter lens should be able to fit both of them into the frame. Not as close as they could be, but still two for the price of one planet and moon. Always a nice image to shoot. And finally, on the 30th of January, we've got the moon, Mars, and the Pleiades relatively close to each other. About 100 to 150 millimeter lens would do the job at fitting all three of them into the same frame. And also, January includes some meteor showers here. The meteor shower we're talking about is the quadrinids. Uh, they are active from December 28th from last year into January the 12th this year. The maximum being on the 3rd or 4th of January with about 110 meters an hour. Unfortunately, the waning gibbous moon in the night sky is going to cause some interference and might affect how many meteors you can see at this time, unfortunately. It's just the way the dice rolls. Every year the meteor shower is coming around, so if it's not good this year, we can always wait until next year and fingers crossed that there's no waning moon that time and that's it that is the night sky in january all done another video ready for a new year of astrophotography i hope this video has given you some inspiration or some ideas of what to get out an image possibly after maybe a bit of a lazy and sluggish december eh? so hope this has been useful for you give it a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if i could have done better and give me a comment down below in the meantime all it says thank you very much for watching hope you have clear skies keep looking up Keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.